So let's talk about the salary differences between the chemist and the chemical engineer. And before I actually go further, I just want to tell you that these are generalizations. This is about the average. I don't consider myself the average, so I typically ignore all this type of data. But it's good to have a reference point because once you get the reference point, you at least know if you're earning too little or too much, if that's uh, very important for you. And of course, eventually money is money. So you cannot just ignore it. You will want to earn up more to have happy family and so on. So guys, once again, don't worry about this. And this is very gener general, especially I I'm going to talk about the USA, which is the one that has let's say the best standard because USA has more technical and let's say it's easier to compare between them because they have very nice statistics for this but of course it's not the same as in Germany it's not the same as in South Africa not the same as in India Thailand Mexico everything is different every economic society is different so guys this is just an example so I don't want to be mean with you guys, but in general, life science is not well paid because if it has no applications to real life and you cannot make money, well, then this is just knowledge. It's like a random fact. You are like, oh, cool, good to know, but you could live without it. Now, the production and manufacture of new products or services is well paid. So if uh, let's say you are willingly to pay for a sandwich happily because you're hungry or for a drink because you're thirsty or for the movies because you want to have fun so that's easier to get rather than the knowledge knowledge is a little bit more abstract and people is not willing to pay that so that's very sad because typically science is more into the chemist side production and manufacture is more into the engineering side but once again, you can be working as a chemical engineer and work in the science department and you can be working as a chemist and work in the production uh, manufacturing. So here it goes, engineers versus chemists. So this is all, we have different sections by employer, by age, by degree. But in general, as you can see, this is $114,000 per year. So that's about, let me calculate, it's about 8,000, no wait, it's almost 10,000 US dollars per month. The chemist is not that behind, that will be about a little bit less than 9, I would say maybe 8,000 US per month. And of course this includes very early ages and very old ages, actually this is, it sounds very cool and you say, oh, wow, it's cool, but the ones you get to here, let's say very age, very young age, is 65 uh, million, that's roughly half, so instead of 10,000, you will be earning 5,000, and instead of 8,000, you will be earning 4,000, right here. Now, as you can see, I think the, uh, the more you grow, the faster you grow, the more money you get. So... Look, this the typical. Well, I you know, Americans have this the three, the six figures or the money. Once you get the hundred thousand per year, well, you, you will get this probably at 40 years if you're a chemical engineer, and you will get this until 50 years if you're a chemist. So, that's a good thing to note, even though these are very good salaries compared to the minimum wage and so on. But you still need to consider places you're going to work, maybe. It's very easy to say that you earn this, but if you're in California or versus, I don't know, any other state, cheap states such as Kentucky, Kansas, and so on, well, that's cheaper to live on, so you're going to probably spend less and so on. So this is very abstract or not that, once again, we're talking about averages, so it's just general scope. Now, of course, the more you prepare, so a bachelor, master, or PhD, the more you earn. So as you can see, if I were a chemical engineer, I would definitely go for a master degree because that makes you earn the most. And if I were a chemist, I would go for the PhD because that's where you eventually will earn up the most. 
Now, always work for the industry because there's more money. The bad thing is that it's easier to get fire and so on. The good thing about the government is that there are plenty of, uh, let's say, extra stuff, uh, social service, more, uh, I don't even, more privileges and so on. And the good thing about academia is that you get the respect, you get your office, and you're actually doing a very nice job for humanity, but the bad thing is that you don't get that much money. So that's in America. Let's compare this in median salaries in the Eurozone. So, okay, ignore you. Well, this, the number of responders you can ignore. Switzerland, ID, ID, because these are not that much. But the salary is also pretty similar to that of USA. In euros, well, this was a long time ago. It's not that fresh. I think it's about 10 years old. But you can see the place that pays the most is between Belgium and Germany because they have good jobs and so on. UK also pays good. You will try to avoid maybe Portugal, Italy. And this is for master of, in general, I mean, in general, for engineering. There's no chemical engineering. This is only general. For PhD, well, of course, you get a little bit better. Germany and Belgium, actually, you can see the jump right here. And I also got this right here, but instead of showing it to you, I'm going to give you the link later. Same stuff, right? This is the same image as this one right here. You want to check it by yourself slowly right here. And as you can see, this is four years old. So it's not that old. Now let's see, let's compare chemists versus chemical engineers. So as you can see, this curve right here is the chemist. And you will see this curve right here is the chemical engineer. And as you can see, well, we've got a little bit more. The average is right here and right here. It's pretty similar to the average. But the thing here is that the, they earn difference. The average earns about 30 to 40K if you're a chemist. If you're a chemical engineer, the average earns up 60 to 70. So that's, once again, it's about percent of graduates. It's, once again, a very let's say, big generalization. Now, what do we have here? Well, we're going to talk about experience. I told you already, guys, the more experience you have the more you can actually charge so once you are out of university and you have no experience you will earn up between 50 and 66 thousand dollars per year now you go eventually let's say you start being a junior one to four years 56 to 70 not that huge amount but it's still better now you start being a senior you may earn up to 64 to 84, which I will say this is already awesome. The bad thing is that you are probably between 30 to 40 years. And this right here, this is between 40 and 60 years. So this is the sweet spot, but well, you are already too old. Or at least not all, but you will not get, you will not travel that much as when you were 20. And eventually more than 60, of course, more money because you got more experience is the highest amount actually up to 126 and once again these averages are bases based on sorry these numbers are based in the average good now for a chemist as you can see it's way lower 40 40 50 45 and so on with less experience so you can compare directly this versus this right here let's take for instance this example you are five to nine years old in experience and the chemical engineer will earn up to 64 and 84. For the same guy, you will have between 44 and 61. So that sucks. It's actually almost 20,000 uh, 20, less in average, which is not fair, I know, but that's how it works. And um, we're talking about USA guys, but I would say this is the general rule of thumb in the world. Engineering pays more in general. And we're done, guys. I just wanted to show you this very easy, uh, very quickly. If you want to check out more information, you got the links right here. I'm going to paste them in the comment section. And 
yeah, please let me know if you have any doubts or comments. How much do you earn? Or how much does a chemical engineer and a chemist earn in your country? If you're, uh, let's say, a graduate student, if you're a master student, if you're, you have doctor and so on.